Hey there, audio post enthusiasts. Are you ready to level up your Pro Tools game? Well, you're in luck because today we're diving into the magical world of Pro Tools templates, particularly my 5.1 and 2.0 mix down template. I'll be showing you how you can set it up for your own use and giving you a tour of all the goodies it includes. Plus, I'll be sharing my top tips for exporting those shiny masters and stems for all the world to hear. At the end of this video, I'll be letting you know where you can get a copy. So grab your favorite beverage and let's get started. You can see in front of me, I have my Pro Tools 5.1 and 2.0 mix down template. So it will do all the automatic mix downs from 5.1 to stereo and you'll have all your stems broken out. You can see here I've got my different groups and I've got a DX group, which is dialogue, effects group, effects, Foley, ambiences, MX, which is music or score, VCAs and your masters. So within each folder, I've broken up my tracks into kind of eight to 16 so that it works well with the controllers because most are set to be sort of eight channels. Uh, and it means, you know, when you click on DX1, your next eight channels will be mapped out. And it means when you're clicking, banking through, things just don't get that odd, or it's easy just to switch to the second bank of faders there. You can see I've already set up my sends as well for you. And there's the LFE as well. So the channels where I use LFE, which is uh, dialogue, effects, and music, I don't tend to use them for Foley or ambiences. Uh, they are set up here. So the reason why I do that is because you can click here and you've got your pan and then there's your LFE there, but I find it's hard to, or you know, difficult to get to. And when you're on a controller as well, it's a lot easier to just use a send. So I'll go through each set of groups now, just so you can have a look. So we've got DX, we've got ADR, then there's our LFE and our reverbs. Uh, and depending on how I work, you'll see, so all the DX are just mono. But with effects, I've got eight channels of mono and then channels of stereo. Obviously, these things can be panned around in 5.1. But we've also, you can see in the reverbs, I've also got two channels of A reverb. One's for the front, one's for the back. So you can send something in, uh, send a sound effect, and then you can have a quad reverb of that sound effect if you want to. You don't have to use it. You can turn them down. Uh, if you want to, uh, but they're there as an option, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, we've also got some 5.1 reverbs in there as well. If you've got them, you can use them. So you can see here Foley has all mono tracks, and there's 16 of them. Uh, then we've got ambiences. There's mono, which are great for dialogue. There's stereo, and I've also just whacked in uh, to 5.1. But it's really easy to add channels once you've got it set up because you can just duplicate them. Here we have our MX group or score, and I've got four channels of stereo, and then there's four channels of stereo, but it's been upmixed using this plugin. This is the uh, DTS by Waves, and it's just a really simple upmixer that does a great job of just chucking sort of reverbs and things without transients into the rear speakers. You can also adjust the LFE amount, uh, and I just find it's really simple for up mixing any of your stereo music or score up into 5.1. Sometimes it's good to not use that. If you've got stems, break out the stems and use the stems to kind of pan things around and then use like a, a reverbs to make your score more immersive. But this is a simple way to just up mix your score. The other plugin I'd suggest you use, and that's for the LFE channels, I've got it on all of them, is Low Air, that's also by Waves, and you can purchase these in the links in my description, and that would just support the channel, but this is great for adding just uh, harmonic distortion in the low frequencies. It adds just so much more weight to any of your like, um, lightning sounds or big gun shots or cannons, whatever you want. And you can pick the frequency it boosts in, and you just add Low Air and the Low Vibe, uh, and you can also uh, turn down how much it's kind of a wet dry signal so that you get more of it or uh, more of your original signal or less. And that's great for if you don't want to get phase issues between your main speakers and your LFE. If you're in a great calibrated room, you may not have issues with any of these low frequencies 
phasing each other out between the Ella Fina speakers, but not everyone's home theatre is is uh, calibrated properly. And so this is a great way to avoid that from happening. Uh, and then if you move through, we've got our reverbs again, which I'll talk about the front and back and how you use those. Here's our VCA groups and each one is broken up. So you've got your DX, ADR, then you've got reverb. So each one, it goes FX and the reverb. It means you've got control in mixing. So if you've got too much reverb on your dialogue for, say, someone gets really close to the camera, and rather than just kind of leaving it, you might want to back off the reverb or they're further away, you want to boost the reverb to give them that distance. Uh, you've got that there as well. So that just gives you extra control. Uh, and then you've got an all fader, which pulls down all the VCAs, which pulls down all your channels on the whole project. So here are our master channels, and I've set it up in a way that the whole lot can export in one go. So all your stems that are required for deliverable, as well as your masters, all get ex exported out at, in one hit. We've got all the channels in our groups, but we've also got an M&E channel. And so that's music and effects. And so that is your only your effects and music channels, no dialogue into that. Uh, and then you have uh, your master. So these are obviously the 5.1s here. And then next to it are all our stereo mix downs. And so these are all sent through to our stereo mix downs. And we also have a stereo M&E as well. The other thing I've got is a second 2.0 master. And this is uh, kind of, I call it my webmaster. So if you're working in broadcast, which is, you know, minus 23 LUFs or 24, depending on where you are, this one's more of like a minus 18. And there's just a bit of a, a slight compression on top, but only the smallest amount, but it's more about hitting the hard limiter a bit. So it kind of crushes your dynamic range a bit, but it's great for just putting something up on YouTube uh, and you want that extra volume if people are listening on their phones and things like that. And so that's automatically done as well. And each one's labeled. I haven't put any plugins on this because I know everyone's pretty particular about what plugins and EQs they use. I'm a big fan of Fab Filter, but Pro Tools has some really great standard plugins as well. And also people have their own taste of what kind of order they put their plugins in. One thing I have set up, as I said, is my reverb. So each reverb, you'll see here I've said this reverb, which is reverb A, and then there's a front and a back. So what I'm doing is reverb A here gets sent, the same send gets sent to both of these, and then they are going to the DX bus 5.1. You can see I've panned front and back, so you've kind of got a quad reverb. So this A is grouped to all of the A groups in each uh, stem. So you can see it says there reverb DX, FX, Foley, and Ambience. So that A reverb is the same as this A reverb here. When I say it's the same, it's grouped. So what I have to do is if I put on a, a reverb, so let's just force, you know, sake of picking a reverb everyone probably has, is you click Revive 2. We add that to the channel. You go to this group A. We go Reverb. We want to add Revive 2. Uh, or you can hold Alt on a PC, and we can just drag that across and add that to our A here as well. So... Now we have multiple instances and you want to put that on each group A. So it'll be um, the ambience as well, which look for the sake of it, I'm just going to do it as well. So if we chuck that across here, so now each, each reverb A has the same one, but if I have that reverb open and then if we open this reverb as well, so see how we got two reverbs. If I change any settings, it changes it on both reverbs or in fact, all the reverbs attached to group A. So we could pick a uh, preset or you can change any settings and it will be the exact same for each channel. So what happens then is in a scene, if you, you could automate a change of reverb within that scene or technically you can just use B reverb. But if you decide later on, you're like, oh, I don't like that reverb or I want to add a longer tail to it. Once you change one, it changes them all. So it just means each different stem has the consistent reverb for each uh, channel that you're using. So just to quickly show you the trick on how to group your reverbs, let's just say I've selected, let's just select these, but I've selected group A in every single stem. If I group it, uh, control G groups, I could call this A rev. What I do is go to mix and we turn off follow globals and then that turns off these global settings. And then in here, we can turn all these off and then what you do is group all the inserts and the bypass as well. So if you select all those 
and then if we click OK, which I'm not going to because I don't want to add it, then that will group. So whenever you add a plugin to any of these channels, it will fix, uh, it'll group it with each other reverb. I hope that makes sense. So one other trick that I do with my reverbs is to have the front and back. So we've got like a quad reverb, particularly if you only have stereo reverbs, this is a great trick. So what you do is you send A, so reverb A is going to both of these, but we copy the reverb and you want the same reverb as the other one. But what you then do is change Particularly, you want the uh, pre-delay to be bigger. So maybe by about 20 to 30 milliseconds, I'd suggest maybe 30 milliseconds. So if this one's 43, you want this one to be about, I don't know, 73. The other thing you can do and what I tend to do is either you can darken off the reverb on the back so there's less treble. Uh, you can change the characteristics, even make it slightly shorter reverb so that things finish in the front or the opposite you might want to finish further in the back so you shorten the front and lengthen the back so the reverb tails off into the back more but the the key thing here is having the pre-delay up at least 20 to 30 milliseconds otherwise they're going to be the exact same thing and you will have issues with the phase and it won't uh, give you that sense of, of immersion and give you that uh, surround sound so that's my trick. If you don't want to use them, you can just delete or hide those channels or literally just pull the fader down. You don't have to use those, but that's a trick that I've been using forever. Uh, and that's a good way to use stereo plugins in a 5.1 situation. I love using that for everything for music as well. So now that I've showed you my template, I'm going to show you how to set it up for your own system. So you're going to go to your in and out settings and you need to make sure that you have your uh, interface here. So if you're working in 5.1, you might add a new path and you want to call it, you know, 5.1 master, which I think I've already got. And you want to set that to 5.1 here, or you might have stereo or you want both. Maybe you've got two setups. Once you've added it, so you can see it's added here that these are my analog outputs of my interface. And what I can do then is we can just select those and we drag them into your channel settings. Make sure they're obviously the right uh, setup. So if you've got your speakers set up in your interfaces, left, right, center, LFE, blah, 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 you've got to make sure that's set. Now, obviously I'm running a 7.1 system here. So that's my main output. But if you've got, there's my 5.1 as well. But then what you want to do is go to your bus and you'll have all the reverbs here and then your master channels. Now to listen to everything in 5.1, you need to find the 5.1 master, which is here, and you're going to click this map output. And so then you can see here, I've got 2.0 headphones, 5.1 and 7.1. You need to make sure you select your 5.1. The other thing to note, once you've set that up so that you're listening to your 5.1, you can also go to your 2.1 here. If you've got a second set of speakers, or if you want to listen to your 2.1 in your uh, left, right, you can do it that way as well but we're going to set that up there. Uh, I'll go 7.1 because that's my system. And you can see the speakers on there because what you can do here or what you want to do is select your output there and your audition as well. So that means when you're auditioning a plugin, you're going to hear it through your system. That's how you set up your output. So once you click OK, you'll now be listening to your 5.1 master at the end here. So that'll be outputting your speakers there. The last thing I need to show you is how you export all your stems. So you can either go file bounce mix, or if we go control alt B to do your bounce mixes. So here's our project name with the date you want to wave BWF, and then we're going to select all our sources. So you'll see here, we've got all our reverbs and our buses, but we don't want any of the buses. We just want these ones here. Uh, this is our DX stem we've got fx you can just plus through until it gets to the next one then we want to go for the sake of order let's go our 5.1 master you press plus we then want to go to our 2.0 stems so we've got dx all the way through and you'll see the m and e there and then you want to go to our 2.0 master which is the bottom one here and then our 2.0 master web version which is the boosted version now once you've set that up anytime you go to bounce again they'll already be there. So you just can rebounce if you've got a new version. Obviously the initial setting up is a bit annoying, uh, but they will always be there from now on if I rebounce, uh, if I go to the bounce page. So what we want to do is go interleaved, but sometimes for the sake of a DCP, you might have to go 
to multi mono, multiple mono, and that will uh, break every channel out. So left, center, right, all that sort of stuff, which you could probably just do for the 5.1 master, but it depends what your deliverables are. But I always go interleaved and then they get one wave file for each stem, they can just chuck it in their editor. You want to go file per mix source. If you go single file, it'll be one giant wave file that the editor will have no idea what to do with. We've got 24 bit, 48 Hertz, which is the uh, templates settings. I turn pad to frame boundary off because it adds um, a little bit of audio if you haven't selected from the very start of a frame or something like that, but I just don't use it. I don't import after bounce, but you can. You can bring it into your project and listen back through there because uh, I tend to re-import it later on anyway, so maybe I should just do that, but uh, it's up to you. And then you obviously select where you want to do it and just bounce. And it will bounce everything offline and you'll get all the stems broken out into whichever folder you select. Now, as promised, I'll let you know where you can find my template. You can get your hands on a copy by either purchasing it directly from my Noisy Post shop, which will also help support this channel and the time I've put into building it. Or better yet, you can snag a free copy with any purchase of my practice productions. But wait, what exactly are these practice productions, you ask? They are a series of release productions that have been professionally filmed and recorded that you can purchase to hone your skills and take your showreel to the next level. Each production comes with an AAF of a release production, as well as an accompanying MP4 file. These suite of products are perfect for improving your audio post-production skills and are suitable for beginners and experienced producers alike. So don't wait. Head over to noisypost.com.au forward slash shop for more information and get your copy today. Well, that wraps up our tour of my Pro Tools 5.1 and 2.0 template. I hope you found this video helpful and that you're now feeling inspired to give this template a try for yourself. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of more audio post-production tips and tricks. And if you have any questions or comments about the template or anything else, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.